Hi, I'm Adarsh Fernando, Product Manager on Android Developer Tools. And in this video, we're going to talk about how you can make your automated UI tests easier to write and scale. Automated testing of your UI is critical in ensuring that the behavior, look, and feel of your app provide a consistent and high-quality experience for your users across different devices and form factors. But doing it scalably is not without its challenges. So we've been working hard on solutions to help. From APIs that test your app against configuration changes in a synchronous way and accessing real OEM devices scalably, to official support for fast host side screenshot testing. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's jump in. Device configuration changes, such as rotating a device or unfolding a screen to your app, are a common occurrence. And without proper testing, users may discover issues with layouts, persisting data, or app stability before you do. So what's the best way to test your app across these configuration changes? Well, that's where the new Espresso Device API comes in. When using Android virtual devices running API level 24 or higher, this new API allows you to perform configuration changes during test execution. And the best part is it does so in a synchronous way. So no more fiddling around with sleep functions. Before you get started, you'll need to make sure your project is using the latest Canary version of Android Gradle plugin 8.2, and that you've downloaded and installed Android Emulator 33.1.10 or higher from the SDK Manager. Next, make sure your app grants the internet and access network state permissions. This part is necessary for the test to be able to pass commands to the test device. Remember you can add this to only the Android test manifest so it doesn't affect your release version. Finally, in your app module Gradle file, set test options emulator access enabled to true. And while you're here, go ahead and import the Espresso device library into your app project. Now for the fun part. Let's see how this works with a test that performs a basic device rotation. First, we want to ensure a consistent starting state for our device. So we create a rule to set the device to portrait mode. We can then create a test for what happens when the screen rotates to landscape. Before the configuration change is complete, the test asserts that the UI adapts to the new layout as expected. These APIs can help you test rotations on a number of device form factors but there are also capabilities specifically for foldables. For example, there are foldable devices such as the Pixel Fold that have a rich outer display, which can be useful to quickly check a notification or new content. But if the user wants to engage more deeply into your app, they might unfold the device to use the larger screen. Transitioning your app from the outer screen to the inner screen results in a configuration change, where your app should respond to the increased screen size. The device API has a number of foldable states that you can use to simulate these configuration changes. First, let's start the test with the device in the folded state by calling onDevice setCloseD mode. We can then make sure our app's layout has adapted to the compact screen width. We can then call on device set flat mode to transition to a fully unfolded state and assert whether our layout has adapted to the expanded size class. Like the other Espresso device APIs, this call is fully synchronous. Because this test performs folding actions, it's likely to fail on a standard phone or tablet. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just skip this test when running on a device that isn't foldable? Well, the device API has a solution for that too. You can specify which of your tests require a foldable device by using the requires device mode annotation. Here, we've added it to our foldable test function and specified that we need a device that supports flat mode. Now, when testing multiple form factors, the test runner automatically skips running this test on devices that don't support unfolding to a flat configuration. 
You can add this rule for each test or an entire test class. While these APIs currently work only with virtual devices, physical Pixel devices such as the Pixel Fold and Pixel Tablet announced today will be able to take advantage of these APIs. But what do you do if you need quick access to real physical devices to run your tests? That's where Gradle Managed Devices' newly added support for Firebase Test Lab comes in. Just a quick recap before we get into the new features. Gradle Managed Devices launched last year to help make it easy for developers to use a variety of virtual devices in both local and CI testing. With a few lines of configuration in your build scripts, the Android Gradle plugin takes care of downloading and creating devices, managing snapshots and test caches for faster, more consistent execution, and shutting down devices to release valuable resources. And with a new type of virtual device image that is optimized for lightweight testing called automated test devices, GMDs are the recommended way to utilize local virtual devices in your CI. But there are times where you really need to test on real physical devices. With built-in experimental support in Gradle Managed Devices, it's now easier to leverage Firebase Test Lab's selection of physical and virtual devices to run your tests from CI. To get started, we'll first need to import the Firebase Test Lab plugin into the top-level Gradle project, and then set the following flag in the gradle.properties file. Now, let's configure our first device. Here, we've specified a physical Samsung device running API level 33. And a quick pro tip, if you're using Android Studio and you're unsure what model IDs and API levels to use, the IDE can show you compatible values as autocomplete suggestions. Now, if we want to run tests with Firebase Test Lab, we're going to need to authenticate Gradle with a Firebase account. Great news is that you can skip doing this manually by passing Gradle a service account JSON file. If you don't already have one, go to your app project in the Firebase console to download it. Then just use the following DSL to point Gradle to its location. Now we're ready to run the test. Just use the Android test task with the device name and build variant you want to test. Gradle then builds your app uses your service account to run your tests on Firebase Test Lab and returns the results right back to your local machine. The results are viewable in a HTML report, a proto file you can open in Android Studio, or in the Firebase console. Now, one device is great for a demo, but we really want to scale with Firebase Test Lab across multiple devices. Here, I've set up a number of Samsung devices across different API levels and form factors. We can run tests across all these devices with a single task by adding them to a device group. And just as easily, we can run tests on these devices using the Android test task. Now keep in mind, running a large number of tests can accumulate a cost, so make sure you're familiar with Firebase's pricing. Running your tests on Firebase Test Lab is a great way to scale your tests across a number of different form factors to ensure your app looks great on real devices. And with Gradle Managed Devices, integrating into your CI is easier than ever. But sometimes you just want quick feedback to check whether a small update to a theme or reusable UI component created unexpected changes without having to start up a real device. Screenshot testing is an effective way to get visual feedback of recent code changes across a number of layouts and screen sizes. They work by comparing screenshots of your app's UI at a known good state, called reference images, to those that were taken during test execution. If there are no changes, the test passes. If the test fails, you can either debug or accept the test screenshot as the new reference image. Typically, these tests run on real devices. But what if you could run these tests host-side without building your app and deploying it to multiple real devices? Well, 
If you're already using Compose to write your app's UI, you're likely familiar with the powerful preview system in Android Studio, which allows you to render different components and layouts across different themes, screen sizes, and UI states within the IDE. Coming soon, as an experimental feature in Android Gradle plugin 8.2, we're taking this capability even further by allowing you to quickly convert these previews to host side screenshot tests. Let's say that you just added a new chat screen to your app built with Compose and set up previews to show others. After a few iterations, your tech lead is happy, your designer is happy, and so is product. Great. Now you want to make sure the UI doesn't regress from the approved design because of changes in other parts of the app. So let's set up some screenshot tests to catch potential regressions early. To get started, first create a new directory or source set in your app module and name it screenshot test. In that source set, create a Kotlin file and set up the preview like you normally would. And that's it. Now it's time to generate the reference image by running the screenshot test task with the flag to record reference images. Gradle generates the reference images and stores them in your project for you. You can then commit your reference images along with your tests to your CI. Now, imagine someone makes a change to a reusable component that has unintended consequences. If the change affects your chat screen, your screenshot test can catch that regression. Just run the screenshot test task. After the tests run, Gradle generates a HTML report that includes the reference image and the new test image for each failing test. Can you spot the difference? If you didn't, that's OK. The results also provide a diff, which highlights the regions of your app that are different from the reference image so you can quickly identify the regression. And the best part is, because this is all done on the host, tests run much faster than if we needed to run them on a real device. So even if you're running these tests on your local machine, you can test for regressions across many different layouts, components, screen sizes, and themes with just a few simple steps. Remember, this feature is heavily experimental, so for the latest behavior changes and instructions on how to get started, check the preview documentation. We've covered a lot of different ways that you can adopt, improve, and scale testing of your app's UI across a number of configuration changes and device form factors. We've talked about how the new Espresso Device API allows you to test your app running on virtual devices against common configuration changes, such as device rotations and folding, in a reproducible, efficient, and synchronous way. And with Gradle Managed Devices, you can now easily integrate Firebase Test Lab into your continuous testing. With just a few lines in your build script, you can connect to your existing Firebase project and leverage Firebase's large selection of virtual and physical devices to scale your continuous testing. And coming soon to Android Gradle plugin 8.2, built-in support for using your Compose previews for host-side screenshot testing helps catch potential regressions in your app's layouts across different themes, screen sizes, and states. It'll manage reference images and provide quick results that are visual and easy to follow. These experimental features are just the start for providing more useful ways to help you write, run, investigate, and scale your tests. So please try them out and provide feedback to make them even better. Until next time, thanks for watching.